Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here, yet back with yet another 100% achievement and trophy guide and I am very excited to be telling you that Telltale Games is back. Yes, queens! The very popular publisher has teamed up with Deck Nine Games in order to bring us another episodic adventure in the of the hit Amazon TV series, The Expanse. So as I said, this does follow the show where we get to experience Kamina Drummer's life, also, Kara G, who plays drummer in the show, is on hand to lend a voice here too, which is nice. Uh, also, this takes place before the first season of the show, so you don't need to have seen the actual TV show itself to get what's going on, although it does help. Now, this is, of course, being a telltale classic and episodic adventure, so episode one is obviously out now. Episode two is uh, August 10th. Ep three is the August 24th. Episode 4 is out September 7th, and Episode 5 is out September 21st. There is also a 6th DLC episode, but I'm not sure what that entails just yet. Uh, but quickly, as for achievements and trophies, in each episode we will need to be collecting all data logs and scavenge items. Plus, in Episode 1 and future episode, there are uh, a bunch of miscellaneous achievements. So for this one, we have to find a laser crystal for the Doctor. Later on down the line, there is an achievement for keeping everyone alive. So... Any time that you get an option to kill someone, just don't do it, just in case. So remember, if you ever get that option, do not kill anyone. Uh, either way, for this episode, you're looking at roughly between 50 minutes to an hour to complete. Um, now, obviously, just like in the past, with the dialogue options, some stuff you choose, um, the, certain, the, the, the character will remember it, etc, etc. Uh, so you can choose literally whatever specific one you want, like I said, as long as it doesn't entail killing someone. Because as I said, there is an achievement for keeping all possible crewmates alive. I'm not sure, obviously, how it goes just yet, but it's best to just keep everyone alive as best you can. Um, otherwise, like I said, for any dialogue options, you can either choose the same as me or choose the opposite one. Any sort of specifically important ones, I will, of course, let you know. But, uh, yeah, that's that's about it, so let's go ahead and uh, let's do it, man! Let's celebrate. What are we celebrating? Our last... Mission. I've heard that before. This is the one. By the end of the day, all of us are gonna be fucking rich, but mostly you and me. It's another wreck. It's not just any wreck. The UNN Urshinabi. Dropped off the map less than a week ago. No distress call. Those UNN pricks never come out this far unless they're carrying something special. Aren't you one of those UNN pricks? <laughs> Easy. If I'm still one of those UNN pricks, then you're still an OPA traitor with Anderson Dawes' bounty on your head. But... The past is the past. The past is the past. Why didn't you take it? The bounty. I knew you were worth more. Anybody who could piss off someone that dangerous must be pretty fucking valuable. Anderson Dawes is a gangster and a killer. It's not hard to piss off a man like that. Well, his loss is my gain. Just want to make sure you're not having second thoughts about our deal. No, come on. We're equal partners. We pay the crew, the costs, and the overhead. The rest is 50-50. You and me. We've got a good thing going here. Nobody fucks with you, which means nobody fucks with me. And hell, if this score is what I think it could be, you've got the deal of the century. Now drink.
Yam Sang, or whatever the fuck you people say. <laughs> Close enough. So, also, if you are wondering why men like Cox here seem so familiar, it's because you see them marching up and down Britain, shouting, well, I'm not a racist, but I think England needs to be proper British country again. All these highly skilled and intelligent foreigners coming here, taking our jobs we can't do is disgusting. Etc, etc. You know, you've seen them, the, the entire gamentry of life, as it were. Uh, so, uh, you can sprint by uh, clicking in the right... Uh, the left stick and then if you get lost you can click in the right stick and you'll get this yellow pointer on screen uh, Sorry, I had to get that out there with the whole Cox British people joke because that's what every single gammon looks like Last score we'll ever need all of a century. I got the pep talk from him What's our ETA? It depends on what on how long you plan to waste my time Oh dear, I made the lackey upset. Forgive me. Call me that again. We're nearly there. The debris field is massive. It'll take me a minute to navigate. Han, mate, you can't be disrespecting us like that. You sound like Julie Kavanagh's Marge Simpson voice uh, from the extremely later seasons of The Simpsons. And you sound like I've had 80 cigarettes a day, so go back to bed. Right, uh, if we just head to the sort of middle console here in the middle of the room, if we take a little look, this is going to be the first and second of the data logs out of seven. So you can have a little look if you want to. Have a look in the Artemis log right there. So the Artemis log and the mission log, they're the two of them. Uh, and then before leaving, we can press the B button here to back out. And then if we look to the left on the sort of computery bit right there, it's the ship's diagnostics. Give X a little hole to scan it. And we'll just take a little double check here. But uh, that should unlock for you straight away. Now, again, there are plenty. There we go. So there it is. And there are plenty of things on the ship, of course, you can have a look at. And um, Drummer will say some things, but... Well, that's that's it's not really necessary. It's only to sort of have a look at the, the um, story a little bit more, etc. But otherwise, we'll head down the ladder. And when we get here, we will go straight in front of us. Yeah, good idea, bruh. Again, you can have a look at the crates and there's a couple of things to be looking at. But we'll head straight down and there's a ladder at the end on the left for us to nip down as well. The Artemis isn't much to look at. But she's built to last. And we're gonna get the next data log as well. Immediately look to the right to have a look at the air log, uh, air lock prep log, and that will be data log number four out of seven. Now again, you can't really get lost in the game, uh, providing you just keep clicking in the right stick and it'll tell you where to go, but we'll head to the left. So first left here, into the room. And um, we're gonna see the twin brothers taking a little punch and punch. Oh, just let me go. It just fell, okay? What I tell you? Tinsha, you stupid prick! Quit fucking up! Hey, boss man! Make him stop! Shut it, Okaka! Carry on. I'm enjoying the show. See, Pashanwala, even Exo agrees. Okay, okay. For the good brother. <laughs> <laughs> we got a job, Baradnos. Listen up. Nah, fuck that. I'm tired of rooting around in the dumpster for that Inya. Cox promised us a real payday. He said, give me three months and you never have to work again. He said, he said, this the next job, and he the boss man. <sighs> Just like series, bossing everyone around, only this time no doors to keep you on the leash, yeah? Just do your job, okay? Sure thing, boss man.
Come on, Baratna. So, one brother's a bit of a fanny, and the other one uh, thinks he's hardcore. We'll put them in a damn place. Right, uh, we're going to get another data log now. So, from where we start, turn directly around, hold to scan the old refrigerator. And you get to see some tasty stuff. Well, we don't really, but uh, no, no, that's about it. But anyway, that is data log number five out of seven. Might as well take a snack for the way, because well, that's what I do. Anytime I pass a fridge, my nose immediately gets straight in the fridge. So head straight, and we will brief Virgil van Dyke, the old doctor of life. It's like, you know, when women who really love shopping go shopping, and they ju just get dragged into a shop by Virgil. sheer force. They couldn't help it. It was the force. That's me with a fridge and a cupboard and any fast food restaurant I go past. I got a problem. I took a course in auto dock repair during my residency. Useful for work outside the medical system. It's been giving me abnormal readings since series, but I finally know why. The laser crystal's badly occluded. That sounds serious. Can we replace it? We can, and should. Normally I wouldn't recommend it. I could always open people up the old-fashioned way. But the twins get into more mishaps than a normal crew. A high-quality gem would ensure that I'm ready for their next disaster. I assume you didn't come here to talk about crystals. We have a new target. What is it this time, El Dorado? The Fountain of Youth? Let me guess. The Falcon Horde of Venus? <laughs> the UNN Urshanabi. Cap believes there's something valuable on board. Something special. Do we want to invite that kind of attention? We'll be fine. In and out. No games. I'll monitor any data you send back. And I'll be here to patch anyone up, should it come to that. So, now that the little conversation with Virgil is done, we can just continue on. We're going to go to our room. We're going to see what's in there. Uh, -huh -huh. uh No, but we are just going to continue forward. Go to the right. And go to the right again. And if we continue on to the right... On the right, again, is our room. There it is. C Drummer. Chicken Drummer. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, again, a couple of things we can look at in our room. Nothing of any value or uh, any entertainment purposes. You just, we're just going to suit up. And uh, no, can't even have a look in the drawer to see what's in Drummer's drawer. Shame. Although that did just make me sound quite pervy. So just scratch the last comment there. Ignore that one. Thanks. But you are not a traitor. You love your belt, and right now, belt is me. I'm busy. You're late. Quit tinkering and get your helmet. We're about to push off. Fucking make me. <laughs> Typical Martian. With the mouth that only knows how to kiss ass and spew caca. Now, sometimes through the game, we'll be doing these little quick time events. Now, if you go into the pause option menu, the accessibilities, you can actually put the timer uh, to infinite. So you don't have to worry about it like I've done here. So it'll all be random for you. I think it might be the same, not too sure. Otherwise, it'll just it's literally just a quick time event. We've all done quick time events. You press the button you see on screen and job done. Cutting thrust. Prepare to enter float in three, two... <laughs> uh. Come on. Let me hear it.
You got me. <laughs> Fuck yes. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> you were kicking my ass for a minute. I thought you had me again. <sighs> that was a good move. <laughs> kind of a cheap shot, though. If it was a cheap shot, I would have smashed your brittle belter bones against the ceiling. Don't believe everything they taught you in the Martian Navy. My bones are just as strong as yours. I didn't believe a single thing they taught me at that fascist brainwash factory. That's why I'm here with you, brittle bitches. Arlen and Rayan have begun breaching the airlock off the bridge. Once we're in, we are going Holy to- Holy shit, Io! Usually, Io is covered up by these dust streams that fire off from its poles after volcanic activity. But it's clear as day. It looks like any other moon. Pale and lumpy. Don't you talk about her like that. She's a beautiful volcanic goddess. <laughs> I usually only look for what could kill me out here. But it's nice getting to see it through your eyes. Even if they're the eyes of an inner who doesn't know her ass from her oxygen bulb. You mean an inner who pile-drived your ass into a ceiling, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's head out. Just remember to- Woohoo! <sighs> As I was saying, remember to keep your weight back when you land. Still, not bad for an inner who's barely been in the belt for a month, hey? Reminds me when Rayana and I were learning to spacewalk. One time, he crashed right into the hole and shit his back suit. <laughs> shut, shut, shut it! Cool up! Whoa! Uh, airlock is open, Exo. Uh, good. Let's see what we have in here. Okay, so we're into the other ship, and I'm not going to lie, when Maya had us on the ceiling right there, I thought something else was going to start happening, but that's, uh, uh, get your mind out of the gutter, everyone. I thought she was just going to help her up. I know what you were thinking. Filth. Filth. Anyway, we are into the um, uh, next ship now, so this is where we're going to start getting the scavenging items, or the, just the scavenge items, as it were. And sometimes the loading screen apparently takes quite a while to uh, kick it into gear. Table scraps. Ah! Fuck! Yo, Baratna. She's crazy. Just breathe. Keep your head down. It's okay. Now say puke in your suit, okay? That you won't choke to death on your own sick. Yeah. 
Enough. Whoever put out this welcome gift for us is long gone. And they left behind a big-ass ship that must have some valuables still on it. So get scavenging! You all have your orders. Hurry up and do your job so we can get back home. Okay, so apparently the pirates wanted to play some football, only they were going to call a headball this time. Uh, yeah, that's that's some pretty pissed off pirates. Right, so when we start, what we're going to do is head to the opposite side, and we're just going to give the heads a little flick. Hiya! Should we play some headball? Let's play some football. Football, yeah! Anyway, right here on the opposite side, there's the drive analysis. This is, uh, sorry, this is data log six out of seven. Then, um, there we go. So that'll be the driver signature analysis right there. So what we can do, we're going to head to the opposite side from where we started. You can either go to the left or I'm just going to smash through all the heads. Ah! Smashing heads, smashing pumpkins. Sorry, everyone. Sorry. So we go straight through the door now, and then just to the right of the next door is the quantum processor. So this is the first of the eight scavenge items that we're going to collect. So that you just put that apparently in midair, and it floats and vanishes away. Job done. So now we just need to get past this next bit. Um, we'll hold the door to open. Uh, now, obviously, what you can do because you're all gravity and stuff, we can just head right and left onto the walls and everything like so. So. It's easy enough, yeah? You just keep walking. Anytime you see a bit of blockage, instead of jumping over like normally, you will just sort of nip through it like so. Uh, there we go then. Easy enough, but we'll get to the next area. With You can now lift off by pressing the right trigger as we smash another head out of the way. So head over this part, and we're going to actually be coming up to another uh, scavenge item. So if you have a look at the floor, any f if you want to get down any floor and wall, just go down as close as you can to the floor, press the right trigger again, and you will float back down. Uh, continue heading up, and then pr hold the left trigger to go up the wall, and with this panel, blowtorch it. Again, this is very easy, you've just got to move the blowtorch around, so go make a nice little square for yourselves, and this is going to be the fabricator, this will be the second scavenge item. This looks like a fabricator of some kind. Maybe for material printing? Do we... Yes! Gimme, gimme! So, uh, we're gonna uh, press the right trigger again to fly, and then what you're gonna do is sort of do almost a... Th you're just gonna go up, and then you're gonna be on the next part, yeah. Sometimes it's a bit weird to explain, but, you know. So we'll hold up to open the door now, hold the X button to open the door. Okay, time to scavenge. Drummer, looks like the officer's section is still intact. Go check it out. On it. And this is where we're going to get the one and only miscellaneous achievement through here, uh, through the game. So, we're going to float up and then immediately sort of head back and to the left on yourself, if that makes sense. So fly up and then immediately turn around. You can see the flashing beacon of hope in the sky. Uh, right bumper and left bumper, by the way, is if you want to do a bit of... Um, uh, what's the word? Going right and left? You know what I mean. Not strafing, but with the camera. Anyway, there's the nav beacon. We're going to go past that, float down, go down to the other side, and this is where the laser is. So we'll press the A button to smash it up. And congratulations, one achievement down already in just 25 mins. Virgil, guess what I found for you. There we go. Looks good, brah. Looks good. Oof, Virgil's well happy with that one. Laser crystal. So, uh, we're going to head up. And uh, we're going to, again, you're going to talk. Um, you can choose, again, whatever dialogue options that you want. But we're going to make a little fly for it now. And then we'll start heading effectively straight down. Sort of straight right down. And you can just see this little piece of, uh, I don't know, we'll sort of call it. 
uh, debris just on its own and right in front of us as we're looking now that is where we are going to be heading again just like the sprint button you can sprint to go a little bit faster as well And once we get here then we'll float down, we are going to open up the machine or we're going to collect the machine for the next scavenge item. Because I am cool and I am class. It's just what we do man, it's just what we do. Right, so uh, turn the camera around and then what you're going to do from now, we're going to start flying up. I'm going to try and explain best I can uh, where we're going because it can be easy to get lost. So. As you can see with the sort of moon in the background, fly up and as you can see if we have a look up and sort of to the left you can see the big part of the ship in front of us. What we're going to do is head into the gap and just continue on straight through that gap for a minute or so. You can go ahead and uh, smash some bodies out the way if you want, just chilling. Meow. So when we get to the end, we're going to start turning right. And then what you're going to see, again, directly in front of us, a, a small piece of debris, what looks like a path. There we go, right in front of us right now. And this is the next scavenge item, which is just the fuel burner type thing. So we're going to smash it down there, or the fuel barrel, yes, because it's a barrel full of fuel, that's why it's called the fuel barrel, makes sense. So collect that one, that is all good, Maya will play a little trick on us, which is just hilarious, but from here, we turn around, you can see the floating body, we're just going to smash him out the way, excuse me sir, not, not that you know what's going on. And then we're just going to float inside of the ship again. It's like my, I'm all good now bruv, but thank you for the trick, you made me crap our pants for no reason. And in this little area, there is a temperature log. Uh, if we go to the left, there we go. Just on the left again, there is the next temperature log. So as soon as we can, give it a little scan, and we're good as your nan to go. I really am. In fact, that should now be seven out of seven for the data log. So that is all the data logs in episode one, completos. So all we've got left now is three more scavenge items to collect in the uh, in this in the game uh, in the rest of the episode even. So now what we're going to do is actually crack on with the story, find the officers' quarters. So again, we're going to head left here. Just keep clicking the right stick if you get lost. Um, but all we're going to be doing is literally clicking the right stick and just following the path around. And actually, this is where scavenge item number six is as well. The water recycler. So pinpoint your pointer at it, hold to collect it, have a little conversation with, oh, I want my British country back, man. Uh, Cox again. And then just continue on forward. Water recycler for themselves. You were a UNN officer. Do you have a backup recycler for yourself? Of course not. Not sure what happened to this guy right here, but he seems to um, he seems to have been extremely chilled. Just like, yeah, go on, cut my head off. I'm just, I can't be asked to fight it. There we go. Right, so continue on <laughs> straight. And now you're going to try and, or you are going to interact with the door, but it ain't, ain't going to work. So, about that. It's a fingerprint lock. You're going to need to find the right hand. An officer. It's the bucker. Good news. The logs show that there was one out in the crew mess hall. Second Corporal Horowitz. All right. Might be difficult to get his body back to the door, though. Don't need all of him. Oh, God. Uh, of course it wouldn't work. Right, so now we need to go to the mess hall to find an officer's hand. So we'll head back on ourselves. Back to where the chilling 
well, say chilling, chilling dead guy is. Uh, heading back out, and then we're going to make a fly for it again. Excuse me, get the hell out of my way. Thank you. So, obviously, we're going to float back out to the... The infiniteness of space. I can see out of a space and time. So, again, all we're going to be doing then, sort of down and to the right, we're going to find the mess hall. Europa's Bane. Anyone heard of it? It's one of Toussaint Zapata's ships. Ah, fuck. Shoulda known. Who is that? Latest pirate flavor of the month. Led a mining strike on Europa. Stole a few ships. Now self-employed as a full-time murdering psychopath. UNN has been giving her a wide berth. If she wanted to take out this ship, it'd be... So, of course, what you can do is just go ahead and uh, you can scan everyone, see um, who uh, any of the captains are and everything. But we're just going to go straight for the captains. So, what we're going to do is if we head to the opposite side here and then we're going to fly up just in the hole. We're going to uh, fly in straight. We're all good. And there's going to be a corpse right up here. We'll hold a scan it and this is actually going to be the captain. So... If you're short on time, you don't actually need to scan everyone else. Uh, but there's quite a few dead dudes and women, plus a couple of pirates as well. So, uh, if you wanted to take a little look at that. Otherwise, we're just going to saw off the dude's hand and make our way back. Sorry, broski, but you're not going to really need it now, are you? Sorry about this. Oh, um, somebody decided to go bowling or something, did they, before he had his head chopped off? Wait a minute, don't cut my head off, I'm about to get a perfect g- Hmm, well, that's unfortunate, no perfect game for you. Rayan, what's happening? Ah, ah, an accident, my leg, um, uh, it's the- Falota, you're the accident! Keep holding, I'll be right there. Drummer. So, the most accident-prone space astronaut bro, uh, he's just uh, smashed his leg up or something. So, now we're going to have to go and try and rescue this dude. So, uh, head straight in front of us, and we're actually going to be coming up to the first biggest choice of the episode slash game so far. So, again, just continue to go straight. Um, obviously, just clicking the right stick in order to get places... My leg. Samalo drama. Samalo. Hold still. We'll see what we can do. What happened? Unexploded charge, I think. Pirates must have left it behind. So like I said, we're coming up to our first uh, big thing, uh, big um, decision of the game. You can either cut Rayan's leg off or lose the supplies. Um, now, what I'm doing is I'm just going to cut Rayan's leg off. The reason is he's a bit accident prone. He hasn't really helped much. Uh, he's, he's a bit of a wiener, isn't he? He's a bit of a mill house. So he's just a bit, yeah, kind of wienerish. So again, completely up to you, but... Um, we're just gonna lose Ryan's leg. I'm not being funny. You know, there's a bunch of supplies and stuff which will help everyone. Or with Ryan, you know, we can patch him up. He's always got another leg. I'm sorry, Ryan. Um, and he can always get another one just fitted in. He can get a big robot leg or something when we get back to Earth. So we'll actually be better off for him. <laughs> what are you doing? Lowering the oxygen intake. It's no morphine. But it'll help. No, no, I can't. Be strong, Bakalona. You heard her, Baratna. Be strong. 
He's on his way, but Rayan's stable and his suit is pressurizing. Your patch should hold until he's back on board. You did good, drummer. Virgil's entering your sector now. Best thing you can do is hurry up and finish the search so we can get out of here. You be right, man. Like I said, you you be fine. Just get a just, just get a giant robot leg uh, sorted out, and I'm sure NASA or whoever it is will sort you out. Right. So now we're actually going to open the door to the officers' quarters. Was that a selfish move there? I don't know. Uh, but anyway. So again, now we have sorted uh, Rayan out. What bam? <laughs> oh jeez, man, you're you gonna be floating forever. Actually, it's mad, isn't it? Isn't it mad to think, as we're just playing and we're just getting on with our daily lives, imagine the amount of, like, just debris and just bodies floating up in space forever. Quite scary, actually, when you think about it, ain't it? Take a look up. and Somebody's floating up there. Destined to never be found. Weird. So we're going to be going for oh, scavenge number seven anyway, so do not go through the door just yet. Um... It's not all a cutscene, so don't worry if you accidentally do, but the first thing we're going to do is go into the right room here. And as you can see, just on top there, there's another fabricator panel that we can, or it's a panel that we can smash open. With a fabricator, we can grab. So that'll be scavenge item number seven out of eight. Nice find. <laughs> Thanks. It appears I have one advantage over the pirates that works. So there we go, float back down, and now we will actually be going inside of the door where we're going to see some more surprises. You're in. Let's see what these UNN big shots kept to themselves. All right, we'll see some surprises in a minute, but <laughs> and trust me, it's not exactly like a Kinder Egg surprise. So from where we are, then what we're going to do is go into the right room in order to find scavenge item number eight. Uh, I do apologize, I was getting a bit confused as to where it was, but it is in the right-hand side room. There we go, the officer's quarters. And if we go straight in front of us and open up the drawer, you will see a cigar, which of course will be good for the... Um, <laughs> The Julie Kavanagh Marge Simpson style old lady from the later Simpsons seasons. Still brilliant though, anyway. So what we'll do here, we need to get up and above to grab it. So if you head to the left, obviously hold the left stick. And we can get onto the ceiling. Then we will hold the X button to collect it. This will be number eight. Now the achievements for collecting everything, uh, everything won't unlock until... The uh, end of the episode, so don't worry and don't panic if it hasn't unlocked just yet. Otherwise, we're going to get back onto the floor. I will end you. I will smother you in your sleep, apparently, which is just awesome. Otherwise, we can head into the right-hand side room, and again, like I said, they're not Kinder Egg surprises. They're just more headless corpses. Tidy boy. So what you're going to do is interact with the captain, who is to the left of us right now, and we will search him. Looks like a personal key card. I should find wherever it opens. Right, so if you didn't manage to get that fabricator number seven out of eight, now is the time to do it because once we interact with the painting, there's no coming back here. So if you missed that number seven, 
um, scavenge item, go and get it now before doing the painting. Otherwise, if we're all good, we can just crack on, examine it, and uh, ooh, there's going to be something on there. There you are. Maybe something good on here. Or maybe a lot of dick pics. Guess we'll see. Cap, found something that could be something. Transmitting now. Fuck. That's a lot of data. <laughs> Alright. Load up the crew and head back. I'll see if there's any gold in this shit pile. Now, if you couldn't already tell by Cox's face, you just know he's going to betray us. So I'm thinking that, you know, where Drummer said, oh, maybe there's some big d picks on there. Now, I reckon they've got Cox in some uncompromising positions. Uh, you know, in a G-string and everything. Look at me, I'm, I'm Princess Leia. <laughs> I'm sexy. You know, that kind of stuff. But anyway, um, Cox is going to want us to do something. And of course, it's all going to go to tits. It is, if you want to put this wreck behind us. So what we've got to do then is, again, just keep clicking the right stick so you know where you're going. Uh, but effectively, it's straightforward until we get onto one of the thrusters. And then from there, it's effectively the end of the game. It's literally just going to be about a 8 to 10 minute cutscene now, where all, as I said, it all is going to start going to the teats. To the dogs. This is Drummer. Preparing to access the fusion coupling. Stand by. Maya. Maya. The volcano. You have to see this. Maya is everything. Sabaka! But it's actually not the end of the game yet. We just got to do a few more quick time events here. It'll come up on screen like now. Again, apparently if you get one wrong, uh, because you've got inf infinite time, you can just um, keep going until you get it right. So, just keep going. You'll have to do the, uh, about four or five uh, missing the debris, and then we will... Uh, again, this will be the end, and then cutscene will ensue. This is the way of it. We all know that. 
Death is part of the pact we make when we venture into the belt. Drummer was one tough bitch. With her past, I figured she would survive anything. But none of us is immune to the realities of life out here. I know Kamina Drummer. And she wouldn't want us wasting our oxygen on mourning. She'd tell us to get off our asses and get to work. That's the drummer I know. She'd be looking ahead to the next score, the next burn. That's right, boss man. I keep my eyes forward. But that makes it a lot harder to watch my back. It's over. You're fucked, Pompa. How the hell did you- Zabakawala tried to torch me. Lured me down to the thrusters, hit the engine, play it off like it was an accident. I bet he was up in the bridge alone before coming down here, yeah? So what? I was setting new coordinates. How was I supposed to know you were on the hull? <laughs> Why don't we pull up the radio logs from the server? Shouldn't take long. Now I understand. Y'all see what's happening? Drummer's making her move. I always wondered when she would. Why did you do it? Was there something on that drive I found? Can you believe this bullshit? You've been planning this since you first stepped on board this ship, haven't you? Mutinous bitch. Ask yourselves, who do you believe? Me? Or the man who has made promise after promise with no payoff? Darling, Rayan. Take her down to the brig. She's gonna pay for this traitorous bullshit. Do it! Nah. I don't think so, Pampa. Damn skinnies. I should have known. Everybody stay where you are. Stand back. This is still my ship. Why don't you put that gun down, Captain? We're all crew here. We may be scavengers, but we're not criminals. We follow protocol. We solve disputes with words, not violence. That's how we keep our humanity. Give me the gun, Captain. It'll be okay. She's gonna kill me. No one is gonna kill you. I won't be so sure about that. Back off. I'm warning you all. Captain, it'll be okay if you just- Bullshit. Tell it to the skinnies, not me. You wanna see what happens to you when they're in charge of this ship? Maybe we should tell them who you really are. <laughs> Fuck! God damn it, Virgil. Oh All you have to do is... If you ever find yourself in a situation where someone's pointing a gun and you're you think you're gonna be the hero, kick a dude mega hard in the balls from behind. He will drop the gun and be in excruciating pain instead of just trying to wrestle with someone with a gun who's clearly bigger than you. So yeah. Just life advice. If you're ever in a bank and it's getting robbed and you wanna be the hero, just aim for the balls. And that's the only time is it ex it is acceptable to kick a dude in the balls, apart from if he's uh, been an extremely naughty boy and deserves to go to prison, then that's also acceptable. I could have turned you over to Dawes a hundred times, but I didn't, because we made a deal. A deal is dead. Oh no. Don't you fucking dare. Don't you dare- Take him to the airlock. Oh, no! No, drummer! No, let me go! Drummer, no! 
Please, drum her now! Listen, come on! Listen to me, damn it! Drummer, listen to me. The coordinates on that data drive, they're for the MK Core. You've never heard of it, that's exactly my point. Look, you were right, okay? I did try and take you out. I've heard how you ungrateful fucks all talk about me. Why should I let you cash in now? But really, I... I wanted the profits for myself. Because this score, drummer... This is the greatest score any scavenger has ever come across. How could you possibly know that? I've been at this a long time. When there's a treasure this big, I make it my business to know about it. Look! When you find what's at the other end of those coordinates, the whole system will be on your ass. You'll need me if you want any chance of unloading it. So this is the second big choice of the game slash episode so far. Now remember I said about the achievement where we need to keep all crewmates alive? I'm not sure if um, this part takes effect uh, for that achievement. So as I said, just in case, any time we get an option like this, we are going to keep them alive even though it is tempting to just throw them into space. So again, make sure just in case that we throw him in the brig rather than throw him out into space. There we go, we'll choose the throw him in the brig option. Um, again, like I said, I'm not too sure if that keeping all crewmates achievement is only for the uh, last episode or whenever it is, or if, it's, if it takes into account for the rest of the game. So we'll just chill. We'll keep his bald ass alive for now. And that's a hell of a punch, by the way. And uh, yeah, hopefully that comes into fruition for us a little later on. Otherwise, he might just, he'll probably just end up um, uh, traitoring us and stabbing us in the back, which we could, we will, we can see coming, even in this early part. We've been locked. Cox forgot to hide our drive signature. Hashang, of course he did. <laughs> Captain Drummer, what are your orders? Captain Drummer, what are your orders? What are our orders? Mr. Moe, prepare to service. Do you want to stop calling me Mr. Moe? No. Um, sorry, another Simpsons quote, as always. But that is it for the first episode. So now, you should get three achievements. Yushinabi Hoda, completing episode one with all scavenge items. The Data Master Achievement, or the Data Logger, whatever it's called. Uh, it is Data Logger, that's for obviously completing episode one with all data logs. And Captain Drummer for completing uh, episode one. So, there we go, guys and gals. So that is episode one done. Now, remember, it is the, the 7th of August. So, this is the 3rd of August where I've recorded this. So, a couple of days, I will be back with episode two and then also what I am going to do as well is once all episodes are in and complete I'm going to put all five episodes just into one super fun long video um, you know just in case but there we go guys and gals so as I said that's episode one done thank you so so much for watching uh, hopefully you and I will are glad of the return of Telltale's games good to have them back I will see you in episode two Big love and thanks to everyone for the support as always.